sit and play this guitar. I could sit and play this guitar all day. Hey, would you look at this? This is a nice blue guitar. Tell you more about that in a bit. Hi guys, how you doing? Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive Magazine and GI+. Plus. It's Monday, we're doing the thing that we do on Mondays, which is hang out and talk about the guitar, but today we're talking about the guitar with a very special guest who we'll be introducing you to in just a minute. Ladies and gents, we have Jared James Nichols with us. Not just, not just one of the foremost blues rock guitar players, one of the most potent and powerful blues guitar players you've ever seen, also, an absolute master of today's subject, which is shredding without a pick. Now, I've been chatting with Jared off camera before we went live. Uh, I've been discussing how I was going to be brave and try and do the intro jam without a pick. Whew, it's not easy, but Jared's going to talk to us uh, and show us how it's done. Hopefully, by the end of this stream, I'll be a bit of a master of this kind of technique. Also, not just the master of that style and not just a fabulous blues rock guitarist and a really great guy, but also... The man whose name is on the headstock of this fantastic guitar. This is the Jared James Nichols Signature Epiphone. This is the Blues Power Edition. It's the third one. We've had the Old Glory, the Gold Glory. Now we have the Blues Power. There's some interesting things about this guitar. We'll be talking about that as we go on. But before we do, a little bit of housekeeping. First of all, just want to remind you, if you are joining us for the first time, hi, how are you doing? My name is Nick Jennison from Guitar Interactive Magazine. It is great to have you. We do this every Monday. So if you're enjoying what we're doing here, you can join us every Monday on on this YouTube channel at 8 p.m. UK time. If you want to be reminded when we're about to go live, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. And also, you can give us a thumbs up on whatever platform you're watching us on, and you can share this with your guitar playing friends so we can reach as many guitar players as we can with this stuff. If you're one of our returning streamers who's with us every week, it is fantastic to have you back. We love you guys. We're going to check in with you right now. So let's see how we're getting on in the stream. Marcin was first at the door at 4.05 p.m., which is outrageous. This might be Marcin's uh, earliest attendance yet. Marcin, everybody's watching for the first time. Marcin is one of our uh, longest standing streamers, great guitar player, um, and always the first one here, but that is taking the cake. I can finally watch the live stream again. I missed you all. I missed you too, man. It's good to have you back. PJ is here. Uh, hi, Nick and all. I'm guessing we're all a little bit on the early side, Marcin, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Uh, also, want to uh, take a quick second and shout out Jonathan Graham, who's put this whole thing together. Uh, he is on the switchboard, so to speak. So if you've got any uh, words of uh, admiration for John, Tag Guitar Interactive Magazine. Good evening, everyone. Jared James Nichols joins us tonight for a very special live stream looking at how you can shred on guitar without a pick. He's also got a first look at his brand new guitar. So if you've got any questions for me and Jared, uh, specifically for Jared, you can ask me questions anytime. Drop us in the comment section. Drop your questions down below. We'll be answering them as we go on. Let's see who else we have. Response Audio is in the house. Good to see you. Always in with some good insights. Daryl Queen is here. Hi, Nick. Hi, everyone. First, Josh Smith. Now, Jared James Nichols. G.I. and Nick are bringing the heat on these streams for sure man this is going to be a really fun one i think uh looking forward to some tasty p90 tones can confirm p90 very tasty we'll talk about that in just a little bit larry warren is here larry it's good to have you uh david yates is here who i keep calling dorian yates because i'm a meathead uh this is one of our many many running jokes there's hello nick hello jared hello guys looking forward to this jared's a monster player can confirm uh loved his recent appearance on coffee with ola fabulous yeah 100 percent. shout out to ola england ola you want to come on you know where we are uh sacred god slayer is in the house sacred god slayer is our metal correspondent lovely to have you welcome jared and thanks for giving us your time 100 percent. totally agree uh helmet strap is here uh who else do we have timothy appling is in the house who i keep calling timothy appalling it's the best punk stage name in the world uh who else do we have let's just do a quick little run through mark crandall is here uh good to have you mark crank tom uh high fretboard freaks worldwide I'm not sure where in the world crank tom is uh is tuning in from he's one of our world travelers uh, maybe at home in Germany, maybe, who knows, somewhere on one of the poles. Um, but it's always good a guitar in hand. It's always good to have you on board. Still rubbing my eyes because of the special guest. It's going to be great. I think so. Uh, who else do we have? Chris Brown is here. Mike Seedorf is here. Cowcat is here. Rotel is in the house. Jared is my spirit animal. <laughs> nice. Uh, Richie Cotton as well. Sure, big Richie Cotton fan. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Mark Knopfler, Derek Trucks, Jared James Nichols, just to name a few who make the pick uh, list thing work. Yeah, we're going to talk about all of that as we go on who else do we have uh oh shred with a pick Matteo Mancuso style listen right if I could teach you Matteo Mancuso style I would but he is on a planet of his own uh David Smith has any news on the new Black Star signature amp you can ask Jared. We're going to star that up. It's going to be a question for Jared as we go Michael Lee Firkins more love for players uh 
who were doing the pick and fingers thing. Surprised nobody mentioned Jeff Beck yet, but uh, hey, who knows? Maybe it's because we're talking about Shred. Oh, there we go. As if by magic, Jeff Beck. There we go. Um, so anyway, listen, we're going to get into the meat of today's session. I'm going to welcome Jared on the stream. Uh, guys, I want you to do me a quick favor. Drop me a line in the comments. Say hello to Jared. Ladies and gentlemen, Blues Empresario, master of this uh, this pickless shred style and owner of a fabulous new signature guitar, Jared James Nichols. Jared, how are you doing? What is going on, brother? Hey, everybody. I am so glad to be here. And uh, this is awesome, man. I'm ready to have some fun. Oh, dude, man. Thank you so much for coming on board, man. It's really, really kind of you to come and do this. I, I gather you're heading off on tour in like, is it two hours? Yeah. So actually, I'm so <laughs> glad that we did this because this is going to keep me uh, occupied. We leave. I have a U.S. tour. It kicks off tomorrow at, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard of Sweetwater. It's like Oh, yeah. The, yeah. So they have like a crazy concert hall there. We're going to be up there celebrating the release of the guitar. I have like a clinic, like a bunch of stuff, but I'm going to be on the road for like three and a half weeks, through, three and a half weeks through the States. Mm. So I've just finished packing what little I pack. And uh, yeah, this is great. Man, magic. Well, listen, do me a favor, just so we can we make sure we're getting you through uh, nice and clear. Do you want to play some guitar for us? Yeah, let me know if I need to turn it up. Guys, uh, I'm telling mm -hmm. you this, the incredible tone you're going to hear since everything's already packed up is coming through the JJN black star battery powered so if yes, i need to turn it up or do a little thing just let me know here we go <laughs> can you hear it i'm hearing that loud and clear <laughs> that is absolutely wild, man. And that's coming through the little wee tiny little battery amp. Phenomenal. Just killer. So like, funny. Mate, I don't... This is the thing, right? Well, I was literally just talking to this, uh, talking about this to somebody today. We're talking about, yeah. like, why have guitarists got so much gear? And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's cool. We like our gear, but I, I feel like the mark of a real player is being comfortable going guitar into whatever happens to be lying around and being able to produce some magic like you've just done in front of us through a, uh, a laptop mic. Sounds phenomenal, right? Man, really, I couldn't really agree more. I think that one of the things that is so incredible about being a guitar player is mm. how much gear there really is and how nerdy we can get and we can check out mm. like, you know, like you can take a deep dive on like every overdrive or whatever. But the one thing that I always noticed, um, regardless of genre, the mm. my favorite players, they they I felt like they could plug into anything and sound mm. like them. And I'd always be like, yeah, it kind of just sounds like Eddie or it kind of sounds, you know, like Stevie, whatever. And what I started to realize was the more that like everyone here, we we can probably all agree, the more you practice, the more you invest in yourself and in the tone inside of you and your hands and everything then it's almost like the gear does become secondary. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not going to sound the same if I plug into a Strat or a Tele, but there's certain hallmarks mm -hmm. of people's sound that is them. And I think mm -hmm. that's really the coolest part about guitar. Dude, 100%, man. I mean, there's so many stories about that with, uh, like you see, you mentioned Eddie, but like players like that who have had the chance to plug into someone else's rig and just sounded like themselves. You know, there was, um, I think there was a story with Eddie plugging into Brian May's AC30s with the Red Special, and he was like, well, this just sounds like me. And <laughs> yeah, sure, you know, and it's, um, it, it is easy to get lost in the, uh, the gear side of things. I mean, we're talking to you. Yeah. Check out this story. I'm good. just tell me to shut up at any point. No, nope, not at all, man. Comments, You're the boss. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Check this out. So I did this gig. It was um, 2020, and it was like an all-star jam. It was like mm -hmm. Peter Frampton, Slash, Billy Gibbons, Rick Nielsen, uh, Richie Faulkner, like all these people on stage, right? Mm -hmm. I remember we had rehearsals for it, and mm -hmm. Billy Gibbons walks in, right? And he walks in, and he's all cool and collected, and he goes, mm -hmm. Jared, what's up, man? And I'm like, hey. Every time I'm like, hey, Billy, what's up? And he goes, go check, make sure my guitar works, make sure it's making a sound. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, for sure. So all the guys are like hanging out over in the corner, right? Like uh, 
there was like a little food set up and everything. So I go up and there's a magnetone amp and Billy has a SG and he called it like the little red special. So I open this guitar case. This story could be very long. I'll keep it short. It's and cool, I play it and it's got like sevens on it or something. Mm -hmm. So the only thing I did, man, is I, I hit like an A chord, you know, and I went, mm -hmm. okay, it's got enough mids. It's got whatever, you know, and then I think I just mm -hmm. went like, and everyone like snapped back and looked, right? Mm -hmm. And I was like, done. I'm not trying to like play guitar. You know, I just made sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then Billy goes up. I'm not even kidding with you, man. And all of a sudden, he just kind of goes, and all of a sudden, <laughs> and it was just like, it sounded just like the riff. Mm. And I was like, well, if that isn't a testament, man, he walked in. I was the one that checked his guitar, and he goes, yeah, mm. good enough. And then out, oh, out, of, out of the speakers came Billy Gibbons, if that makes sense. Oh, man, yeah. That makes a lot of sense, you know? And it's, it's one of these things where... Um, you know, the more you the more you learn, I think the more you realize this is the case where you know you're gonna sound very like you, uh, no matter what you plug into, and the gear almost becomes more of just a, a conduit for like you know how can I get how can I get me out more accurately if that makes sense. Yeah, dude. And one of the things yeah. I would say to anybody that's watching this is like mm. try try gear that you would never try. Like mm. not to say you want to go buy this gear, but like mm. I will always be the first one if I see like some weird like baritone thing or like. Like mm. I hung with Tosin Abasi and I'm playing his crazy guitars. Mm. Yeah, it might not be like cool, but at least it shows you like, you know, we, we all get stuck, I feel like in our own heads a lot of what, you mm. know, what we're trying to sound like. Sometimes it's cool to just like totally flip the switch and be like, okay, I'm playing a, you know, a Dan Electro with a baritone with a Bigsby. Like, what is that? You know what I mean? Yeah, man, but it, it brings something out of you, you know, and it's, uh, I guess it's the reason why, you know, you see Dan Electra, I think Jimmy Page, it's one of the reasons why, you know, Jimmy's mm -hmm. not playing, or wasn't playing the same Telecaster or the same Les Paul on every, you know, every recording, that the gear brings something out of you, uh, I think. So, speaking of gear, let's, let's segue into this fantastic guitar, because it's just killer, right? This arrived at my house on Friday. Yeah. Um, I have played it every day. Uh, since I haven't been brave enough to take it to the gig because it wasn't, it's not mine, so it has to go home, unfortunately. <laughs> like I can't break it. So, yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to mess it up, but in my, in my little studio, I've been playing this every day, right? So do you want to tell us a little bit about this? I will preface this, you guys, by saying that I'm not going to give you an opinion on this guitar because a full review is coming of this guitar tomorrow when this guitar is released. So we're looking at this a little bit of ahead of time, and a little loophole uh, around this is I'm not allowed to do the review, but Jared is allowed to talk about it. So, oh, there we go. Um, cool. Yeah, so that's how we're getting around that. So, uh, by the way, I should just point out though, the guys at Epiphone have been kind enough to sponsor this stream. So, if you uh, once you get off the stream, make sure you go check out Epiphone's socials. Make sure you check out all the information on this guitar. It'll all be available tomorrow. Uh, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But Jared, tell us a bit about the guitar, how it came to be, what's different about this one compared to the the previous two editions, apart from the so fact funny, that it's dude. beautiful and blue. Oh, me at a really good time. Look, so here's the first one. Oh yeah. There's Old Glory, mm -hmm. right? all black. Sorry, I'm not like the mm -hmm. best videographer. Um, the original, this was the mm -hmm. prototype they sent me. Oh, wow, dude. Cool, okay, hold mm -hmm. on, and this Sorry. one on the floor. I swear I treat my guitars good, but cool. <laughs> Then we had Gold Glory, come on. This one, right? Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And now we have Blues Power, right? Oh yeah. So, <laughs> Here's my thing, and I know I sound like a salesman. When this one showed up in this color, I, I don't know, you guys. I am so sorry my production is so bad. If you can see this color, though, in, mm. with your own eyes, like in the flesh, it showed up, and I could not believe it, how good this color was. Because I said, they said, Jared, what do you want to do for the third one? We want to do the next mm. one. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, should we do... Like I said, uh, Alpine White, you know, what, what could we do that would really, you know, signify something cool, something unique. Mm -hmm. And I saw, I was at a shop and I saw a vintage SG Pelham Blue. And it was mm -hmm. all blue and green. And, and I went, in my, in my head, I go, man, Pelham Blue is so sick. And then it was just yep. like, ding. So uh, I <laughs> yep. And I said, hey, can we do Pelham Blue? Uh, mm. I've only seen maybe custom order Les Pauls in Pelham Blue. And yeah. they were like, absolutely. So they they went and they they sent this over, literally this guitar. And mm -hmm. the moment I saw it, all Pelham Blue. Mm -hmm. And it has Beautiful. obviously the stinger on the back, the black stinger. 
with the signature. Mm. I was stunned. So they knocked it out with the color. It's not glossy. These guitars, if, if you guys haven't played these guitars, like the Old Glory, Gold Glory, and this Blues Power, it's almost like a matte kind of finish. Mm. And what I love about it is, like, if you were to look right now on the floor of the Gold Glory and the, and the Old Glory, they look like old guitars They because mm. I've played them. And it's almost like the patina, it starts to wear as you play it. So let's say, you know, where you lay your forearm or what parts of the neck you use more, it'll get more shiny and almost build up. And long story short, they send this guitar and this guitar has a few cool, really like, like features that are just knock it out. The first being this pickup. So yeah, cause this is new, isn't it? This is brand new for, for this guitar. And this, this design for this pickup has taken a few years. And that's not to say that anyone was dragging their feet on it. It's because we wanted to get it right. So mm. this, I was able to collaborate with Seymour Duncan. And we made, they call it the JJN uh, P90 silencer, right? But the reality is I'm touring all the time with with all of these P90 guitars. I love them. And, and it just gets down to the fact that like electricity in buildings I can't control. So I'll mm. show up to a venue, especially in America. You know, you know what I always say? My guitars sound the best in the UK. I don't know why. I think it's the power. That's the home of Please Rock, man. You know, <laughs> so, check from. <laughs> so I'll show up to a venue. I'm all excited to play like we all are. And I'll roll up my mm. volume. And, you know, mm. and I'm like, oh, no, you know, I'm going to have to fight this buzz. And mm. the worst part about the buzz, it's not that I, I dislike the buzz. It's the fact dynamically as I roll down, let's say the band's trying to, you know, we're trying to come into a, a, a tighter part or something is a little bit more, you know, mm. nuanced. It's like, I have to be on the volume knob, like legitimately like off, you know, mm. off. And which is a great technique. And we could go crazy <laughs> talking about the volume and tone controls because mm. I use these things like a thousand times a show. But anyways, with this pickup, I wanted to have the best representation of what I love in a P90 without all that buzz. So you're not getting 100% of the buzz knocked off. You're getting like probably 85% to 90. That's interesting. Now, mm -hmm. I noticed that because I, I turned this up and it, it has just a, a little, just a hint of something going on. But yep. that's yep. kind of cool because the home canceling P90 getting it completely quiet is, I don't think anybody's done a good one yet where it's completely silent. It seems to rob a little bit of the, the P90 magic. Yeah. Was, was that a conscious choice then to say, like, let's just let's just kill most of it? Oh, for sure. I, 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 I didn't want to sacrifice the tone for anything because mm. it's like, yet again, in, in the guitar world, it's like, yeah, we could say completely, you know, homeless, you mm. know, or, you know, like, this is perfect. You'll mm. never hear it again. And it's like, then it becomes almost a gimmick. Does that make sense? Mm, I don't, 100%. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be mm. like, hey, if you have a blues power guitar or mm. let's say you even have like a, um, a Les Paul special or what, whatever you have with a P90 mm. and you're like, I love this guitar, but the buzz just really bums me out. Mm. This is, this is just one of those drop in replacements that I feel like is serving a really good purpose for guitar players. And 100%. Interesting enough, the biggest thing I love about P90s, I, I feel like they always, they just let everything come through them, which is so cool because mm. there's this this beautiful sound of like, just like an open guitar, you know, with a P90. Mm. Like I said, I'm playing through a battery powered amp, but when you hit it, it has the mid range. It also starts to go up to, the, I'm getting nerdy, but it go, starts to mm. go up to the, the bloom of the next octave of those notes. But also, it's not sacrificing by cutting your signal shorter because I feel like mm. I would try noise suppressors. I would try all of those pedals that like, you know, uh, noise gates. So like yeah, yeah. off. And then by the time I was really getting inspired to do something, you know, I'm holding it. I'm going, you know, all of a sudden it just go and it just stopped the note. Yeah. I'm like, okay. So. Yeah, man. I mean, totally agree. I mean, just just to jump in there real quick, I feel oh, like yeah, there is course. some there's some magic with that. You know, when you when you're holding that big long sustaining note, there is some magic about the fact that the note has become very small, and yeah. the string is is just wee tiny. But the 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 guitar and the amp are, are, are taking it away into magic. But if the if the suppressor is just looking at how big this note is, it's going to go. Mm -hmm. The note has fallen below the threshold. Off. Yep. And it just doesn't. 
it's not it. I mean, I, I plan to have a metal band. I need it for the trigger to trigger to but yes. when it's time for the solos, it's off every time. So totally hear yeah, you. Yeah, man. And, and guitar is so personal and everyone obviously shoots for different things. But I think the mm. one thing everyone can agree on is you want to have like a dynamic range. So if you mm. want to back off or like you kick off a pedal, it's not like, mm. okay, it's like you want more than just a one trick pony. And I feel like with this pickup, that really gives us that. So 100%. Then yeah. the other thing, they, they were talking to me about like maybe some upgrades on the guitar. And I had never messed around with locking tuners, right? Ever. Mm. Mm -hmm. And I was like, they're like, dude, would you ever try these locking tuners? And I, I, I said, well, I'm not going to use it because I don't use it personally. Like, I don't mm -hmm. want to... I don't want to be that guy that's like, hey, check out my new product that I've never used. Yeah, like, yeah. I was very resistant about it. And yet again, they said, can we send you a guitar with these tuners on them and mm. see what you think? So they sent me these Grover locking tuners. I'm going to try and see if I can go like this. If you can see. Oh, yeah. Nice. And I might be able to close up. Yeah, you hey, can probably close up. Hey. There we go. Yeah. So check this out. So they send me these tuners and I'm like, okay, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm like, all right, just pull the string through. I'm going to twist them up. I tune the guitar up. I do one mm -hmm. round of like, I, I just go, when I do the string thing, I go all the way up and down the string. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I tune it up again and I start to play. And it was like there, it was it yeah. felt like I had already been, you know, stretching the strings. It kept tuning and <laughs> full disclosure, before we got on this stream, I just got home. I just picked this guitar up. I, I don't even have a guitar tuner anywhere. Like, all I'm saying is they're really strong and they're they're really just lasting. Um, the Dude, yeah. The ability is great. So those are a few things. And I think a lot of players, you know, with Les Pauls, they'll, they'll come to me and they'll say, man, love Les Pauls. I don't like the tuning. And you sit mm -hmm. there and you're like, oh, man, come on. You know what I mean? So I yeah, think yeah, yeah. You maybe bridge that gap to basically say, okay, cool. Well, if you want to try this, this could really help that out. Dude, I mean, I've been impressed with them. Again, you know, they, they, it arrived, this arrived with new strings. It, it took very little time to, to bed them in. Um, but I also like the, I like the extra mass. I feel like there's a little bit of extra weight at this end. Yeah. It helps the balance a little bit. Yeah, real cool, man. Really, really cool. So anyway, talking about dynamics real quick. Talking about dynamics. So yeah, yeah. we mentioned the pick dynamics. I want to get onto the playing thing a little bit. So as far as the, um, the dynamics in the P90, I, I totally agree with you. I think that's that's a huge deal. It's one of the things I like so much about this guitar. I like so much about P90s. I guess that's doubly important when you're playing predominantly with with fingers, right? Because you have, I, I feel as though you have a broader dynamic range with with your fingers. Is that something that, that you kind of do consciously where you kind of set things up because you have to have that dynamic range and you want to exaggerate it or well for me that dynamic range it really comes from i'm pretty simple as far as like like we were talking about gear before so mm -hmm. my rig basically consists of a les paul 99 percent of the time a p90 mm -hmm. les paul going in and then I, i'll have two overdrives um mm -hmm. and everyone's gonna think i'm bougie uh i have a clon and a tube mm -hmm. screamer and Very nice then basically that hits the front end of a uh, semi distorted black star amp for me mm. when i think about dynamics the first thing i have to check mm. is that my guitar has all of the roll off i need right mm. so when it comes down to it like as simple as it is on this little baby black star if i can go and i can roll up and it has the clarity through it because as a fingerstyle guy, like mm. I need my guitar to be able to have, let's say I'm on five, right? I want all that snap. And then when I roll up, same thing for chords. Like, let's say I want to do an arpeggio, like a, I want to be able to have that. And mm. really what I confide in is the rig has to be set up so that I can do that with this, with the volume knob. Nice. And that's so important to me. Like I'll play other rigs that are amazing, but it's like, it's either 10 or zero and yeah, it works. Yeah. It serves a purpose. But for me, mm. I just cannot play unless I'm able, I'm telling you, I'll play like right now, if I play for you and I go like this,
constantly getting inspired by which way, you know, I change my tone, my volume. And that's kind of the simplicity of this guitar. Yeah, yeah. Forces you to be more dynamic, if that makes sense. You can see it, man. You can see it. So in terms of like when you're playing that, um, the more aggressive stuff there, like we, we talked about this off camera, but uh, you were saying that you're not hitting as, as hard as you might think, because it seems to me like there's a lot of power coming out of the guitar. Yeah. It, it looks and sounds like you're really battering the thing, but like how, how hard are you playing with those? Check this out. I don't know if yeah. this will work. I'm literally on a laptop, right? So if yeah. I do this and I'm gonna come up like close and I go, mm. if I'm just playing this way mm -hmm. and I go, that's with my volume down. I don't know if you can hear that at all. Yeah, yeah, you can hear that. So literally it goes from a whisper like, and then the hardest I'm hitting. Mm. Oh, really my hand this my picking hand is always pretty it's it's really uh george gruen this guitar guy heard me play the other day and he's like mm. you're basically tickling the strings and then at certain points snapping and he was kind of mm. nailed it because really when i'm playing it i'm going like like uh, uh and then if i want to bring it up of course mm. i use more volume i'll use more dynamic Does that make sense? Nice. That makes that makes a ton of sense. Guys, let me know in the comments if that's something uh if that's making sense to you, but I want to kind of frame this in some of the language that we've been talking about um mm -hmm. in some of our streams. So this is really interesting because one of the the concepts that we've talked about at length is the idea. This is a little pet theory I have that there are two kinds of pull-offs. Mm -hmm. Um that you have essentially what I refer to as a bl uh, a brush and a pluck. Mm -hmm. And the brush is the thing that does 90% of the work. It's when right. it's time to but then when it's time to to really get those kind of big, uh, like. <laughs> like the Eddie Van Halen dive bomb sound, it's it's a pluck. Now that's really interesting because this is, it seems to me that's kind of what we're talking about with your right hand technique there, where a lot of the time it's brushing the string mm -hmm. and then we're popping for the accents. That's. You're, you're totally right. Yeah, you're mate, totally right. Yeah, that's really fascinating because that, uh, that jives with what a lot of great uh, left-hand legato technicians have, have, have told me. So this is again trying to, to trying to make sense. Of this is like a unified technique thing. I guess it's it, it's something Guthrie Govan said like in a in an interview ages ago, where he said there are only two sounds that you can make on the guitar. There is the sound of plastic and there is the sound of meat. Mm -hmm. And I tried to get him to name his new album the sound of meat. Apparently that's not gonna happen. <laughs> but yeah, we'll we'll see. But uh yeah like uh so really really interesting stuff. Now we got some questions coming in from the audience that kind yeah, of uh against that uh Mike Seedorf saying that makes sense. Uh really uh awesome info. I totally agree. That has been a little bit of a light bulb for me. I need to to put it into play because I'm definitely hitting too hard when I'm trying to do the fingers yeah. thing. Chris Brown, uh, a good friend of the stream is asking, says, are you using the first fingernail to chug? Great so when question, you're doing those downstroke Chris. techniques, yeah. Uh, so check this out. It's not really, what, what ends up happening is, so my thumb is the majority, honestly, 99.999% of the down, right? Mm. And then if I need to, I'll use my index, my middle and my ring will always pull up. So. Oh. When we're talking about chugging, one of the things mm -hmm. that I do that's really weird is it's almost as if I act like I'm holding a pick. My finger goes like mm -hmm. this, right? So mm -hmm. check this out. If if I'm like chugging and I go down like this, here's my thumb. Let's say I'm playing single note stuff and I go. I, I put my index like as a brace. Oh, interesting. It's really weird. So. I'll just play and then we can break it down. Is that cool? Mm. Yeah, sure. Oh.
this is really weird because so, some reason I can do this pretty fast is the <laughs> kind of weird right dude yeah that's wild i mean okay so this is this this is the only only mildly infuriating because you're a better down picker than i am and you don't oh, have Josh. Pick, but like no dude like that's that's a proper blind spot on my play and i'm like i i don't have that and i'm playing the new wave of british heavy metal so i need to down pick and pff. but that's really interesting the uh i could have sworn just by looking that there was some kind of like uh like first fingernail action going on there but it's all it's all thumb yeah it's all yeah. thumb and like Chris said, uh, so mm. the thumb is a big pick. Yes, the thumb mm. is like the, the big pick. And then if I want to, it's almost like I feel like I need a little more stability. I will push mm. my index against like the, the middle part of my thumb, still using my thumb, not using the index at all. And that'll be like if I'm playing single note riffs, like a... a, like a it's really strange. Mm. And then... All of a sudden, I think it was coming from touring so much and singing. I have this song called Bad Roots, and and the riff in that is just this downstroke like juggernaut, right? And I'm going. <laughs> But for that, since maybe there's a little more speed, I'm literally just on the thumb. Mm. Weird, right? Dude, it sounds great, though, man. There's a real weight to that. Um, and I guess, I mean, you see a lot of these kind of, uh, a lot of the 80s guys will get a lot of, um, I, I describe it as like a lot of finger on the string with the pick anyway. So when there's a lot of this kind of like chugga to chugga action going on, there's, there's a good amount of thumb touching the string anyway. Yeah. So I guess it's kind of, it actually doesn't, now that you've mentioned it, it actually doesn't feel that different to to kind of what I'm doing anyway. That's absolutely fascinating. So, um, I mean, Weird. to that note, very quickly, yeah. I just want to take a few more questions. We've got some yeah, really course, good right. ones coming in. So um, we have another one here uh, from, oh, actually, here's an interesting one from a uh, friend, Timothy. Now, Timothy asking about this. says, do you have uh, thick calluses on your fingertips uh, to be able to finger? Yeah, do you need big, thick calluses? What's up, Timothy? To, uh, to Not, make this really. Work? Not really. I, I know it sounds funny, but people will come up at shows and be like, can I see your hand? So <laughs> when, with my thumb, this is so strange. I mean, I, mm. I'm in the worst production ever right now, but um, there's no, there is a callus, but mm. it's not to the point that you would go, oh my gosh. And also, if you looked at my hands, you would go, mm. maybe the guy plays the guitar, but not really. Mm. There's no serious calluses. It's built up a lot underneath, but mm. it's, it's gotten to the point where I've done it so much that it's almost like my hands are ready for it, if that makes sense. And mm. it doesn't really, in the beginning, it was bad. It was really bad. I would use like super glue. I would use um, liquid skin, anything to try and keep the skin on. But now it's just to the point, like I said before too, it, it goes right along with what I was saying about, you know, like a lot of people think, man, you must really pop, like pound the guitar. The mm. reality is I'm not going that hard for the simple fact that I know exactly how much I need to get the sound I need. And then mm. that saves my hands. From, you know, you'll never see me doing Pete Townsend wind, you know, the windmills. Yeah. Because the reality is it's like, yeah, there's no pick to take that fall. It's it's my skin. Sure. Yeah, and, that's it. I mean, if you cut your thumb, that's, mm -hmm. you know, the two are over. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah that's, I it where I've been that's the stage, instrument. And I, mm. I used to mess around with some fingernail stuff. And mm. I remember I pulled up with an index, right? And I did like, mm. whatever. But something mm -hmm. as simple as that, we were on tour with Skinner. It was this huge place, I remember. Oh, and nice. I did that, and I was so excited. I was so mm -hmm. excited to even be there. And I looked down, and I'm like, you ever have it where, like, you you like, <laughs> you know you just got hurt, and you start laughing? You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I did. I looked down, and I had no finger now. I ripped my Ooh, finger. Oh, ouch. Oh, so dude. So I'm sitting there for the rest of the gig, like, it's horrible, and it's getting worse mm -hmm. as the moments go on, you know? And yeah, yeah. Uh, from that moment on, I vowed, I was like, if I'm going to do this, I can't use my nails because it's just like mm. you need to have that dependability, like a surefire thing. Hundred mm, percent. No, I can totally relate. I mean, I've I've taken most of a middle fingernail off, but never the whole thing, and that's so. <laughs> uh, that's 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 rough. So I, I wanted to ask you about the nails. To be fair, actually, that's the, that's a nice little segue. So as far as the nails go, it doesn't look like you've got a whole lot of thumbnail going on there, or a whole lot of any kind of nail. And I was expecting all, to see. 
Interesting. Okay. And I'm guessing, I was going to ask you if it was a tone thing or if it was more of a reliability thing. Because I know when I play bass, for example, having a, a bit of a fingernail is a problem because yeah. it catches on the string and goes bonk and I lose that dynamic. Yeah. Is that, was it a tone thing? Was it more of just like you say, like a reliability kind of? It was, it was, it was a tone thing. Well, I, I personally think 100% the flesh on an electric guitar sounds light years better than the nail. Mm. because with a nail i feel like you're getting this very sharp it's almost like it's like a pick like attack but it's not because it's not always the same and mm. you're kind of forcing your nail to do that and i'm saying this on an electric you know i understand mm -hmm. i have uh i'll meet these flamenco guys that just blow my mind and they're all nails mm. and i totally get that but the dynamic mm. of the electric where it's going through the pickup and everything it's just a lot different so it was a tone thing first and foremost it was like okay I love the way that the flesh sounds. So I just need to make sure that my nails are basically cut enough that I won't catch them potentially. And also one of the things that happens a lot on this hand, since I'm using my, my fingers so much, like on the, the corners, I have to make sure that those are cut because oh, right. of developing is like all of a sudden it's almost like, ah, man, I got like, they're just shooting into the the flesh. Does that make sense? Mm. It, it totally does. No, it really does, and it's very painful, you know, especially in the in the heat of battle, you know. But it's that's interesting because I I knew I was going to be needing to play some some just finger stuff, and I thought, do I just leave, leave my nails a little longer? I'm kind of regretting it now because <laughs> I, I don't like I don't like that feeling at all. It's something that, yeah. that really ugh, and I I can't stand the feeling of nails on a guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, man, like that's really interesting because again, somebody mentioned Matteo Mancuso on this. He's the oh. exact opposite he has the the flamenco nails but it's a very different oh so he very does different sound nails. yeah he's he, yeah uh, he, un unbelievable i mean like unbelievable you know, we, we we don't even we don't even talk about him in the stream we're like look that guy's an alien <laughs> like you know whatever he's he he exists somewhere in a different universe to the rest of us maybe i'll get to ask him one day he seems it's like so, a lovely lad so yeah it's so funny because uh when i found him i was like i saw him doing like clips of dover or something and mm. i remember i looked him up and i was like oh sh i was like this guy's following me like I should follow this. You know what I mean? It was so funny. He's but it, incredible. It's one of the beautiful things about the, the guitar, though, is, you know, it's like, it's not it's not like a sport where there's yes. like, you know, oh. okay, it, it, there's, there's, there's so much that so many players will get out of, or the, out of each other's playing. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. I, I'm really into it, man. Like, I so I want to, I want to talk to you a bit about the, 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 the dynamic thing and more importantly, the tone thing you were talking about. So the tone of the, the skin, uh, yeah. the flesh on the string, uh, can you talk to us a little bit about, about what you're doing in terms of like producing that tone and how you're yeah. changing the tone with the finger? Absolutely. Cause there's some real, big screaming harmonic saturated stuff coming out of you and also some real lovely clean uh almost like woman tone kind of notes and i'm keeping my eyes out and going is he doing that with the volume control or is he doing it with his fingers it right. looks like a lot of it is with the finger so yeah yeah, yeah. What, so what's what's going on there so the biggest thing i would say to everyone i get i'm getting this weird angle so i can try and show it a little sure. better is um when it comes to picking whether you're using a pick or your fingers where you are picking is such an important thing if you are not using like extreme amounts of gain. Mm. What I've noticed, what I love about the old blues guys, I would hear someone play, right? I'm just gonna turn this up a hair because I'll be louder. But like, mm. let's say it was like, mm. okay, cool. Like if you look where I'm picking right now, basically like neck pickup, where a neck pickup would be, right? And then if I, mm. oh yeah. Sometimes you'd see Hendrix pick and he would be up here like. You know what I'm trying and to that's say? just sounds like Hendrix. That's yeah, and like that, uh, instant uh, Hendrix. There's something mm. about that, um, that, that picking, uh, he would pick across the fretboard and you're going, how does it sound like that? You know, like that, even like. That. There's this weirdness and uh, there's a guitar player named T-Bone Walker, old school mm. blues guy. He would pick across it. I'm not very good at that, but um. But that's that tone, though. It's just that. Yeah. And then Instance. what I started to notice was, okay, if I if I understand that, now if I really focus on how much pressure I'm using, I won't even touch the guitar knob, and it's more about. Okay, cool. Snapping up a little, adding more pressure. Less. 
not any. Let's move that down here. So I, I started to understand that there's a lot mm. more that's happening than just volume into a pedal, into an amp. It was like where I'm picking on a certain string, especially, you know, when I have to make um, the low notes come out, you know, I come back to the bridge because it... Mm. it just everything matters and what i started to notice mm. as i started to add distortion add gain some things would sound better in certain places so with that being said i started to develop okay if i want to have this kind of technique i need to make sure that i'm muting everything else right ah uh, nice so, so basically let's say i'm playing and i go open e and i'm just hitting that one note right Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, if you notice something, as I'm bent up here, right, my pinky is kind of laying across the high E. Mm -hmm. My whole side of my hand is barring every single thing that's uh, not nice. being played. So, like, I know it might sound very simple, but, like, the muting is such a big deal. And mm -hmm. then when you talk about the nuance of getting the dynamics out of each string, it's mm -hmm. almost like you have to approach every single string as if they are their own entity. And then you have their approach, yeah. okay, how do I, how, now it's two strings, now it's three, now it's four. And man, the, the possibilities with the finger style are endless. You know, I can, I can do, you know, let's say I just want to pedal a high E, right? And I go. But it's like, you have to kind of get the feel. It's so personal in every single mm. person a different kind of feel of that. But I feel like that's the first key to finding all those dynamics. Then, that's really interesting. Carry on, carry on. Yeah, one of the other things that I like to do is like, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how do I make, how do I make notes pop out? Okay, cool. Well, if I notice that this, you know, if I pull up, it's the snap. Yeah. Okay, so if I go. Okay, that's a snap up. What if I wanna do that higher? What if I just wanna. I'm basically using my guitar and my frets to get me up to that next level. Mm, then, so the, the oh, go ahead. frets is an interesting one. I want to pull you about that real quick. So there's a couple of things before we hold that thought because I want to pick up where we left off there. But there's a couple of things I want to get before we yeah, before we move on. So the frets, in terms of the frets, are you thinking about how the string is like slapping off the frets? Yes. Is, that, is that what we're referring to? That's very interesting. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of parallels I'm seeing here with the way bass players talk about this stuff. Mm -hmm. um, where they'll talk about playing each string with a different touch because each yes. string responds very differently. Yes. But I, I wanted to pull you about this. This is really interesting. I noticed when you, I have a, a close-up right hand cam because awesome. I'm a nerd. And I, I noticed when you came down here to the... Uh, when we came down here, there was almost this kind of like, almost like this direct on 90 degree mm. thing going on with the thumb. Now, it doesn't sound the same when I do it, but when you're doing it, it sounds really barky. You're so right. What's going on with this this, this, this rotation here? I, I think it's me trying to be more direct and almost have this like, okay, this is my pick. So mm. basically what I'm doing is I'm going from the side to the front, which is giving me a little bit more of a, a snap. And also yeah. another thing, that goes along with this, and you can say, Jared, slow down. How your wrist is, is a huge part of everything. Like we were talking about the Hendrix thing. You'll mm -hmm. watch Hendrix play, and his wrist is so loose, you know? Like, I just, I almost have to like work on getting But then you have to mm. think to yourself, okay, am I trying to, you know, you don't want to tense up too much, but you have to almost, locking the wrist there it's like interesting it's that's really interesting in of itself do you so i guess the consciousness of, of what's going on there is there's i suppose it's a little like there's a bit of give in the system if you have the loose wrist and you can put x amount of force into the string but it's gonna dissipate because of where the wrist is mm -hmm. interestingly this is similar to something eric johnson talks about where he talks about the uh the pick having a a, a, a 
what, how did you describe it? You refer to it as having a, a, a powerful attack, but a loose grip. Mm -hmm. So he's doing a little like, uh, I guess in this instance, the loose grip is a little like what the loose wrist is doing, where yep. you're putting plenty of power into the string, but allowing it just to just to roll over the top. That's really interesting. That's really fascinating. Now, you were going to go somewhere with that before I stopped oh. and we started talking about frets. So yeah, I was going to say like snap against the frets, but then also like mm -hmm. I had to figure out, it's kind of like the bass thing, trying to figure out how to make harmonics, you know, and using all that to kind of, you know, like that. <laughs> You know what I mean? I see that now. Yeah, I is that so? That's with the thumb touching. Yeah, yeah the thumb oh. touching. Wow. Okay, that's really interesting because, I mean, that's something people miss with the pinched harmonic thing is they miss mm -hmm. the fact that it is literally we're dividing the string like a natural harmonic, but we're just doing it somewhere up here. Exactly. That's really, really interesting. So I, I got a question here. I think we know the answer real quick. I want to take this one, but uh, here's a really fun one from uh, David Dare Parker. David, it's great to have you on board. First time commenter. He's asking, do you have a pick hidden away in a jean pocket or wallet just in case? <laughs> well, yeah, I actually do because one of the things, and, and obviously I love playing without a pick. Like, mm. I feel like that is so me. And when I do that, I feel so natural. But where I live, I live in uh, Nashville, and when I'm off the road sometimes, I'll get called in like, hey, Jared, there's this artist, and we want to get you to play the solo, or we want to get you to play the riffs on it. And I'll go, mm -hmm. yeah, that sounds cool. So mm -hmm. I'll go in there, and let's say that they want me to lay down like uh, an acoustic and then play a slide lead over it. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, a lot of times what happens is I'll get in there with an acoustic maybe or something, mm -hmm. and I'll be playing you know, with my fingers, and they'll go, oh, yeah, that's cool. Um, is there any way we can make that brighter? And you go, oh, okay, cool. Give me a pick. You know, I, I understand. Or there's riffs that it's like, hey, we need that to hit a little different. The thing mm -hmm. that I notice is for me and my music and the way I play, I thrive because I got to figure it out myself. If I need to figure something out, it's like, all right, cool. I'm going to play it down here. I'm going to dig in harder. But sometimes, yeah, there's no getting around the fact that and musical situations, sometimes it requires for weird stuff, you know? So... Uh, one funny thing, I did a, a camp with Paul Gilbert, and he borrowed oh, wow. his, uh, his drill with the picks on it. <laughs> so one point I went up and I was doing the uh, the Eddie Van Halen, do, 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 but it was with the drill. It was just hilarious. Oh, wow. Dude. <laughs> yeah, that, that's crazy, man. I mean, they were, they were um, sponsored by Makita Drills when they were on tour, which is like the best yeah, endorsement so ever. Like, I want to drill into, I want to, I want to, like, an Arctic Roll endorsement or something, but uh, that's, a, <laughs> that's a cake for any of our American viewers. Uh, so, oh, I've got a couple more cool questions I want to come in here real quick. So, uh, let me just find the one I am looking for. So, you know what? Here's one we, we haven't actually talked about this, but. The one from Sacred God Slayer. Now, I know you've answered this question a ton over the years, but the question is, why did you decide to use fingers instead of a pick? Now, I'm going to frame this um, slightly differently, because um, I know you've talked about this a ton, but excuse me one moment. Uh -huh. Got a cough button and everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. Full, full pro-operation here. I don't. Um, <laughs> no. but, yeah, but, but, but um, yeah, it's uh, so... There are a lot of players who'll do the, um, I'm thinking of Chris Buck, for example, who'll play a lot of time with the fingers, but still has the pick and palms it. And when I'm doing the, the fingers thing, I always have the pick here, and I'll do, I'll, I mean, I'll play with my fingers. You have it. Well, but I'm always, I always have the pick. So the pick doesn't get involved so much and I won't play with the thumb, but I'll play with these three fingers quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the question is what made you decide rather than doing something like that, what made you go, I'm all in on this. There's no, no pick for me. Uh, yeah. All yeah. right. So I'm going to keep this quick. So like, cause it, it could go on forever, but the reality is I'm, I'm a lefty. So I write with my left oh, hand. Okay. Everything I do is with my left hand. So mm. when I first picked up a guitar, I was trying to hold it like a lefty. The guitar mm. teacher, uh, he goes, hey, man. He was like an Eddie Van Halen nut, and I, like, worshipped this guy. And he goes, dude, you should really consider being a right-handed guitar player due to the fact that it's going to be hard for you to find guitars. You're always going to have to have mm. your own guitar if you go to a jam because let's just face it. <laughs> guitar is a right-hand world, period. Mm. And yeah. um, so I said, yeah, that's cool. And when I held the guitar this way, I started to kind of strum with my thumb because – it mm. felt more natural just as your hand on your on the fretting hand feels. If you were sure. to wear a glove, you would be like, man, I can't feel this. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, like I can't feel how much I need to bend. I can't feel the the push or the pull of the string. 
It would just mm. feel really foreign. So that's what yeah. with my, my picking hand. And I did start with a pick and I was doing very rudimentary things and I was starting to get okay at it. But what I noticed was my, my motor skills, like as a human, like I couldn't do, I could do like a very slow, like gallop, like dun, 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 dun. But I, I'm telling you, like when I say I could not, I worked on this for a very long time. I mm. couldn't get rhythms really happening very good with a pick. Mm. It wasn't that I couldn't get it out of myself. It was like literally pick to hand a string. I was like, I tense up. And mm. anyways, so what I started to do was that same thing where I didn't really like the pick, but you know, I figured I had to play with it. So mm. I, would, I would ditch it in my finger and start to use these fingers. Mm. And I started to fall in love with that. That is about the time that I really got heavy in blues. So there's an old blues player I got to jam with when I was like 16. His name was Hubert Sumlin. He played guitar oh, yeah. and all the old Harlem Wolf stuff, Muddy Waters. Mm. So here I am, little little baby Jared, and I'm jamming with this guy. And he starts playing, and I have my pick down, and I'm going like this. I'm going like, you know, like a... We're playing a... And I'm just a little kid, you know. And then he starts going like this. Oh. I was like, how's he doing that? And I'm seeing his fingers, you know? He's going, you know? And they mm. go. And I'm like, oh, that sounds amazing. Then I heard mm. Albert King go, you know. Oof. And I'm sitting there going. Then I heard Derek Trucks. I remember oh, hearing yeah. on his record. And he was going mm. to. And. The way that he could play, obviously with the slide too, but like mm. his finesse without a pick, it was like I didn't miss the pick. And then of course mm. Jeff Beck with the, and I was hearing all these guys play without a pick, and I'm like, it seems so much more personal. And I remember the night I had a gig with my my band. It was like a covers band, and I forgot a pick, and I was stressed out. And I remember I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm not going to use the pick the whole show. I don't need it anyways. And mm. that was the first time. And I remember my hands got really sore and tired. But I love the way that it sounded because I felt like I was connected to the instrument. I was connected in a way that it was like there was nothing blocking what I was trying to get out on either hand at this time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, no, 100 percent. No, I totally get you, man. Um, it, it's it's interesting because a few players have talked about that. Like Richie Cotson went through the same process of, you know, I think his was born of frustration. He was like, I'm not playing very well, so I need this, I still not playing very. He's not playing very well for Richie Cotton, which is right. still phenomenal. But you know, in his mind, he's going, "No, this is not the standard I've set for myself." Chuck the pick, and you know, a, a whole new era of Richie was born. Um, yeah. So totally get you, man. I, I want to hit up some uh, some fairly rapid fire questions because I don't want to monopolize oh, oh. your time. I realize you got to you got to get out the door because you got places <laughs> to be, man. You're a, bit, a busy boy, but uh, we do really appreciate you taking the time to do this. So I just want to quickly take a minute. Everyone that's watching, man, it's just so cool. I'd Dude, stay all I, night if I could. Hey, man, you know, we'd have you. We'd, I'd be here until the early hours. Um, <laughs> for for me, anyway, I mean, maybe not for you, because that's a very long way away. But uh, anyway, so a uh, couple of rapid fire questions. Want to take a look at this one real quick. So first of all, uh, from a, our friend Wes Goodyear. Wes says, hey, Jared, do you have any tips for staying relaxed when playing fast? I always seem to tense up, and it really kills the feeling in my playing. Now, that is a very interesting uh, choice of words that I want to pick up on there, because... <laughs> There's some people don't think about is the, oh, yeah. the, the, the the segment this idea of I am playing fast and now I'm playing with feeling. But the best players that play fast do so with there's feel in every note. Oh, you know? yeah. um, so what do you, what do you make of this? Like what's do you have any tips for our friend Wes? And for me. Yeah, I don't know for them sure. too. The first one is just breathe. You have to breathe. Mm. One of the biggest things I would find, and I still do sometimes is when I'm in the heat of battle, and especially when we start going fast, do you ever notice that you don't get really stressed out until you're like, you almost stress yourself out like, all right, here we go, here's my fast part. You know? mm. All right, now it's time. But what I noticed was, the first thing was, I would stop breathing. Like if I was trying to do something mm. fast, I would literally like stop breathing. And all of a sudden it was mm. like, my body would go into this weird state, even if it was only for 10 seconds, five seconds. And then I'd be like, I'd come out of it. What I found is, breathing and then also when i mean relax i'm talking like your shoulders i'm talking like your arms your your hands mm. your joints it's so easy to tense up and almost like flex 
to the point where you're and and it's like okay cool but the reality is the like i said with the hendrix thing the more you're you you know like i can probably play the fastest i can with my fingers if we're sitting here talking and i'm just sitting here like this and i'm going yeah man i'm not even thinking about it my shoulders are relaxed my hands are relaxed i you know what i'm trying to say like 100 percent that comes out it's it's like a physical thing man you got to think okay am i breathing Mm -hmm. also like what part of my body is out of whack? Because that's really what it comes down to. It's not going to be, you know, oh, sure, maybe it's the pressure of, or I missed this fret. That's one thing. But the reality is like, you know, you got to be loose just like an athlete. Mm. You almost have to, you have to approach everything with that kind of mindset. And also don't psych yourself out just because Mm. something's fast or just because maybe it's a riff that, or a lick that you haven't played a lot. And you're like, oh, I might Mm. not get this approach it like everything else. And the other thing I'd say is always try and be one step ahead of what you're playing. So like, I always say it's like a domino thing. So like I play a note and I go in my mind, I already know I was going to go like, it's not hard. It's not crazy, but I'm, I know what I'm going to say. Just like us conversing Mm. right now, we, we haven't rehearsed this, but we know, you know, it starts to roll. And that's the way I like to see guitar. No, dude, I, that makes a whole lot of sense. And you mentioned the athlete thing there. This is something that uh, I harp on about quite a lot to my guys because, I mean, let's say we're both gym rats. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, this is not a strength game. You no, know, this is not. not. People make a big deal. They'll, they'll say things like, oh, how do I get my hands strong for the guitar? I'm like, you don't need them to be strong. You need, the, that's not the answer. Mm-hmm. Do you know, you want to be strong, get your deadlift up, you know, but yep. like, this 100%. is, this is not it, man. That's really interesting thing. Um, you know, I, I, I think the relaxation thing and the not psyching yourself out thing is huge. Um, uh, yeah, really interesting. Wayne's actually come back to us and he said, I often hold my breath during fast solo runs. We might have just fixed your problem there, man. So, man, uh, I'm telling you, you and all mm-hmm. of us, brother, you, we're all the same. Mm-hmm. It's like, also we forget, like we're having fun. Like we're excited. Like I'm like, when I'm playing, I'm like, this is the best. And then all of a sudden I go, Pfft. and then all of a sudden you come out of it and you're like, oh shit. Yep. So it's, it's, it's everything. It's the energy. It's the excitement. Mm-hmm. No, dude, I totally hear you. So uh, here's a cool one from uh, a friend, Helmet Strap. Uh, he's saying, uh, Jared, do you use specific fingers for specific strings when playing lead lines or do you not think about it? I definitely, while I was working it out, I definitely thought of it. The biggest thing that I know for specific lead lines is I will think about it in a way where it's like, okay, I think about the lead line and then I think about how am I trying to say it? It's almost like the voice. Like if I want to yell at you, I know I'm going to have to use a lot more force. Okay, if that's the case, then I'm going to do a lot of snapping. and I'm going to do some, you know, I'm going to dig in a little more. Um, But now it's kind of just second nature. The one thing I think about is... It, it's like it's like a moving thing. Everything has to work together, you know. It's like a reaction thing. So now I would say not as much, but I do know, like since I play a Les Paul so much, there's certain places on the neck that I feel like things come out better. If that makes sense, or that different. is interesting. Can you talk just a bit more about that? Yeah. So if, if you have the simplest lick, and we are we're in the key of A, right? And this is our lick. Um, I gotta go that way. Right. Bend up the seven, come down to the five, come down to the root on the seven on the D, right? Mm. Oh. But what I'm what I'm noticing is, let's say I want to say a lick a certain way. Let's say I want to go like the bluesier, the more Stevie Ray Vaughan approach, and I want to go like this, you know, right? But what if I want to have that same essence, but I want to do the more Clapton thing? I go. Right. And then I start to mess with my tone and I go. Or I go. So it's almost like I'm using the same notes, right? Different spots on the neck, I feel like will give me a different uh is the right word like timbre different yeah yeah that makes say. sense and mm. that's something that i think about all the time because sometimes i'll go oh man let me bend that down here instead of going you know um i'll go i want to do it down mm. there so that's something i think about a lot like where am i playing on the neck 
Mm, that is very interesting. And are you, I'm just, I'm, I'm watching you while I'm doing this and I'm looking to see what's going on with the right hand. Yeah. And uh, it, it looks almost like there's an instinctive. Um, it really is, man. Yeah, where, where this hand is, the right hand is going to a place that's going to complement what's going on with the, with the left hand. It's very instinctive now and it's hard. Yeah. And I'm sorry that I can't break it down even more. It's, 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 it's one of those things, as you know, mm. with anything, guys, like it's like I've done it for so long that it's almost mm. like a lot of things have become second nature. So I almost have to like back it up for myself and say, OK, well, how do I, you know, because yeah. it's doing instinctually that I'm not maybe not even mm. saying. No, I mean, I'm not trying to hide anything. <laughs> sure, no, no. I mean, dude, you've been like really giving with with this stuff. You know, it's been fascinating, and I, I've picked up a lot of things that I'm going to go and work on for sure. But um, one thing that I, I'm kind of maybe noticed from that, just from that last demonstration, is it almost seems as though it, there's kind of a thing where the further apart the hands are, the bitier it gets. Yes, and the closer they are together it's it, it becomes more of a mellow thing so it's almost like there's this push pull between position on the neck position on the string that is really really fascinating i think that's a, a super interesting thing i want to throw up this question from uh we'll do this this as our, as our last question and then we're going to sure. talk about uh your giveaway which we'll talk about in a second oh, yeah, there's cool. a giveaway going on so we'll get to that we'll get to that actually you know what there's there's a couple of com i want to throw this up as a comment very quickly because uh i'd hate to see this go um just, just a, a not uh, untouched on. But this is from a, a guy called Al, Al Lindsay, who is a first-time combatant. Al, it's great to have you on board. Had the pleasure of doing front of house for Jared and his band when he supported Walter Trout. Uh, what an honor to work with you and to see you doing well. Hey, I just thought it was a lovely comment. Man, thank so, you so much. And uh, uh, yeah, that Walter Trout tour was amazing across the UK. I'll never forget it. And uh, what I, I'm not sure if you're still on the stream, but I'd love to know what show. But yeah, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, great. Appreciate that. Yeah. I just thought it was a nice thing. I thought I'd, I'd, really I'd cool, hate man. to let that, that go by. Um, I wanted to, there is definitely, ah, this is the one. This is, um, no, we've already answered that one. There was one other, and I'm not 100% sure where it goes. Here it is. This is uh, Sacred God Slayer. He's our metal correspondent who's been nice. doing the downstroking thing with the thumb uh, <laughs> and has observed that it feels a little like slapping a bass, which can confirm. It's very similar. It's totally. almost like a Larry Graham thump rather than mm -hmm. a, a full-on, like, um, like Victor Wooten kind of slap thing, but it's it feels very similar. But he's, he's asking the question, do you prefer one finger over another assigned to different dynamics? Uh, is in index, middle ring, is the index the loud finger, et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's almost like the power, like it's like, here's the world's biggest downstroke thumb pick, mm. right? The index is gonna be my most snappy, my most, um, how do I say it right? Like the most reactive. Yeah. Because it's, it's so, I don't know. For me, it's like the thumb, great. This is like my trigger finger almost. So it's like mm -hmm. I can really snap up with it. And yeah, then yeah. my, it's weird because my middle finger will only be used for certain things. Like if there's a phrase that maybe is three, three strings together, like. Mm. That I would say 70% of my playing is these two. This one comes right. in for the third. And then really the only time that I incorporate my ring finger is if I'm doing almost like Eric Johnson when he would play chords and mm. do like a pluck up. Mm. Because the reality is these two fingers don't feel that strong on their own to do a lot. So mm. it's almost like one, two, three, and then this is kind of an auxiliary. Got you. That's really interesting. And it's interesting that you're thinking about it from a tonal perspective as well, mm -hmm. because a lot of people will think about this from a utility point of view, where it's like, so for me, uh, it tends to be, because I tend to keep the pick, I do mostly hybrid picking when I'm doing the finger thing. Mm -hmm. This finger is very strong. This is the the, the core of a lot of my technique, is this right. finger either, either on the board or picking a string. But this finger is is good, but I I only really use it for stretches. I would never right. grab it and play with that finger per se but i'll do it as like a rolling thing and ironically when we do the roll this becomes the snappiest finger of the bunch because it's oh, on wow. the end of a but that's just a, a a bizarre thing but this finger is only ever there if i need it it's like yeah. okay i got i gotta grab this chord voicing there it is yeah, so, yeah. real interesting uh it's here's a question from strange. sorry no you you're go good ahead. i'm just trying to break down my own technique and i'm like yeah it's kind of strange 
Yeah, no, it's really interesting, man. It's fascinating. So uh, this is more selfish in my regard, to be honest. I'm, oh, I'm kind of pulling this apart going, I want to know what's happening here because uh, I want to steal it. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, a uh, question from uh, from Jonathan Graham because uh, oh, we're not boy. just Jim Rats here. We are, we're, we're Marks as well. Uh, he says, WWF Mount Rushmore, Jared. <laughs> I know what mine is. I know what mine is, but oh, I want to hear I, yours. No one's ever really asked me that. Um, I would have to say my Mount Rushmore would have to be it's you might you might just hate it but uh my top guys it would have to be hulk stone mm -hmm. cold kevin mm -hmm. nash i love nash mm -hmm. okay interesting yeah, yeah weird one um and then probably undertaker yeah take us on there for me take us at the 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 he's number what's one yours for uh for me it's uh it's a funny one it's whether it's like oh these are my favorites or I think if we I think if we had to do a proper Mount Rushmore, it would probably be Hogan Flair, Austin Taker. Oh, that's great. I think. I think. But to that end, like guitar Mount guitar Mount Rushmore. Oh yeah. So yeah, guitar while we're doing the Rushmore. while we're doing that. I would say so for me it would be like Leslie West from Mountain, because he kind of inspired mm. a lot of the style and the tone. I would mm. say Stevie Ray, early Clapton, even mm. like Zach Wilde. Oh yeah, yeah. You know? But like not in a way of just of the i'm more of like an attitude guitar player guy mm -hmm. so it's like as you know it's like that's what it kind of is all about but if there's like a mm -hmm. blues mount rushmore i would have to say mm -hmm. like it would be albert king it would be otis rush it would be if anyone's never heard of these guys check them out albert king mm -hmm. otis rush buddy guy hubert Sumlin. it's so like i have multiple mount rushmores but if it were to be you know they're all different yeah, dude. But, I mean, the Blues Matt Rushmore is great, and, and Otis Rush does not get the credit uh, that is due, you know, like in terms of contribution to the way that we all play the guitar. You go back and you trace the music of these guys, and you see so many tropes that crop up in guitar players that came after, and you go, oh, that's where that came from. You know, that's, oh, that's where this came from. It was, it mm. was like 1956. There's these Cobra recordings, but he would mm. do this vibrato, and it was like the best vibrato, like to this day, he would do this. <laughs> But it was like, this is back in like the 50s when he was. And I'm sitting there going, this guy is playing lefty upside down with that. Just anyways, that's one of my guys. Mm. Dude, yeah, yeah. It's a great selection, man. It's a really great selection. Uh, so I, uh, I'm going to sneak in. If Jonathan's doing questions, I'm going to sneak in a question as well, because I'm a nerd on this stuff. Uh, best numbers on squat bench deadlift. Oh my gosh. Now you're, <laughs> oh man. Okay. So let me think. So I have a gym in my garage now. So I just do everything. Nice. Better. But I would have to say that my best bench was, it wasn't a lot. I mean, it, maybe it is to some people, but like 355. Okay. So you're stronger than I am. That's fine. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, squat. I would say my best squat I'm averaging right now. I haven't done like a p proper PR in a while, but mm. I'm averaging about 340, 350. Nice. For reps of two or three. Mm. Um, and then my deadlift, I did. I still deadlift like once a week, probably mm. um, 405. Nice. I got nice. a pretty good deadlift. Healthy, man. Um, yeah, that's great. That bench is something, though, man. That's a big bench. You know, you're saying it's not a lot. That's a big bench, man. That's, that's a big that's yeah. a big bench. So I next time. 305, dude. I was like, that'll be it. Mm. And then uh i i worked that up so yeah dude it's that's that's my um that's my little achilles heel man so like i have really long arms so i'm, I'm very much a deadlift oh, yeah, guy yeah. but yeah <laughs> so next time next time we're at the nam show we'll be conducting the interview for let's the just Hilton go gym. to the hey we'll go to yeah. like a gym we'll go to yeah a let's do it there man we'll do it like seamus um like great we'll get john petrucci in and zach wilde we'll start the guitar arm wrestling tournament <laughs> um it's gonna be magic so listen jared thank you so much for your time before we go i want to touch on this giveaway do you want to tell the guys oh, a little yeah, bit about yeah. what's going on there so we're gonna do these giveaways listen if the first one's gonna be here in the states because that's where the tour starts tomorrow um mm. but as i come back to the uk and europe they will happen in the next year but what I'm going to do is we're kind of doing this thing that's pretty cool. If you basically buy a ticket to my show, send me a DM or a uh, Facebook inbox, your proof of a purchase of the ticket. And I just wanted to do something fun. I'm giving one of these away at the end of the tour oh, yeah. last night. And then I'm going to give away a pickup, uh, some signed merch in like a meet and greet. So mm. it's funny because I, I was thinking like, what could I do that could be fun? And if anyone's interested, 
buy a ticket, send me a DM or an inbox. And I, I'm, I'm using one of those internet like counters and I'm, I'm putting everyone's name in it and it's going to do a random thing to win. And uh, yeah, it's just something really fun. And I think it's a, it's a cool thing because sometimes I wish more people did stuff like that. But now if you come mm. to the show, you have a chance to win a, a, the brand new Blues Power. That's cool as hell. And it, will it be one that you've played as well? So it's, oh, yeah, I'm going to take yeah, I'm gonna use it yeah. off, off tour. So whoever is going to get it is going to be the one that I play all, all the tour. Nice. That's cool. You want this guitar, by the way. Just throwing it out there. I've been living with this guitar for a while. It's it, it's so far from the kind of guitars that I typically reach for, uh, mm -hmm. but it's just so inspiring because it's it, everything is just so refined and so kind of like uh, streamlined. It forces you to be more attentive to your playing. It's a great okay. thing. I'm not allowed to opine on this, but I am tomorrow. So remember, guys, the review is review is coming out tomorrow. Keep your eyes peeled on that. It's going to be on all of our channels. Guys, one more time, I want to give a huge thank you to Jared for uh, his time, his wisdom. It's been a lot of fun. I knew this would be a good fun stream. I'm really glad you could make it, man. Thank you so much for coming along. Thank you, man. Anybody in the US, make sure you get along to one of Jared's shows. Uh, hopefully we'll see you in the UK uh, in the not too distant future. I'll be there for sure, uh, this much I can oh, guarantee. I'll, I'll say this, this will be the first time I'm saying it. Um, mm. I will be in the UK, I will be back. It's getting announced uh, March and April, I'm gonna be doing some headline stuff and I'm doing March. shows with uh, Mr. Big, Paul Oh, Gray. dude, yeah, right, I'm there. Right, I will be yeah. there. Fantastic. Right, Front and center. Jared, thank you so much for your time. Guys, keep your eyes out peeled for keep your eyes peeled rather for the review. It's coming tomorrow. Best of luck with the tour, man. I will see you. Uh, I will see you all next week. Jared, hope to catch up with you very soon, definitely in January. Uh, and we'll see Thanks, you. Everyone. Thanks, Take bro. care, guys. Bye for now. All right, cheers.